What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. If you're looking to build bigger biceps and triceps, you come to the right place, you come to the right video. I'm going to show you today why you need to up the ante when it comes to arm training if you want to see better arm gains. And it's going to amount to even up to an inch of gains on your arms just by doing these more intense training techniques. So the first thing I want you to try to do is utilize mechanical drop sets like we're seeing right here. So mechanical drop sets allow you to take advantage of the fact that just by changing the position of your body without having to interrupt the flow of the total set, you can actually keep a set going to failure and through failure on a given exercise. So we start with a bicep version of this. And we know that the simultaneous version of the curl is going to be more difficult because of the stability of the core that is needed in order to move that weight. But we can take that all the way to failure and then from there, just drop it down to an alternating version. You'll be surprised. You might have thought you couldn't have cranked out any more reps, but now when you split it up side by side, you can. So you took a set to failure. You've continued to push through failure. But even there, the biceps don't have to stop working. You may not be able to curl anymore, but you can drag curl. You can shorten that moment arm, and now you can pull the dumbbells up to your chest by allowing your elbows to drift back behind your body, which allows those biceps to still work, but in an easier way. The same thing can be applied to your triceps as well. You do a tricep extension here, dumbbell tricep extension, which gets difficult to a point where you're going to hit the wall, but you don't have to stop. You can turn it into the modified French press just by allowing your arms to drift a little bit more in front of your body here. And you do a few reps of that until you can't do any more. And you realize that the triceps may be done from that exercise, but they don't have to be done entirely. You can eke a little bit more effort out of them, meaning more gains, by allowing you to do now a, a close grip dumbbell bench press and, and then finally taking that to failure. So there's one technique. But we can also include things like this. More focus on including negative training. Now, it's not just slowing down the rep to make sure that we're not forgetting the eccentric component of it. We're talking about actually adding negative-only repetitions after you've gone to failure concentrically, which allows us to elicit even more work out of that muscle. And you can see here with the tricep pushdown, I do the tricep pushdown until I can't do any more, and then I allow body English, I allow myself to get over the top, again, shorten that moment arm and push down. Yes, I'm even using my chest here to do a push down, almost a dip onto the rope, but that doesn't matter. We already know that we're done concentrically. All I'm doing is getting it to the bottom of the rep so that I can continue to push out more eccentric reps, which we know we are capable of. It, we're always going to be stronger eccentrically than we are going to be concentrically, so I can actually get a few more of those extra negative only reps. And we can do the same thing here on the bicep curl. Do a cable curl and do what I call here is a squat curl. And yes, we actually can take a curl and allow our body to put us in position to do another curl. So as we get down to the very bottom here, we may not be able to move this thing at all, but if I squat my body down, rest my elbows in on my thighs, and then let them take the ride back up to the top, I'm right there in position again at that midpoint, the hardest portion of the rep, to incur yet another negative rep and push myself even further. This next one is really interesting, and it's a bitch if you try it. And I promise you, you're going to be burning. It's going to give you that metabolic training effect that I think a lot of us don't include enough of in our training anyway. But we're actually using an occlusive effect, an occlusion training effect, because we're not really allowing natural blood flow through the limb. It does give us a chance to actually do very light weights here and still see gains. So if you look at what I'm doing here with the curl, I'm just repping out here with 20 pounds. I, I can handle a lot more weight than this. And I'm only going for a certain goal rep here. Here I have 10 in mind. I knock out 10 reps, and then instead of allowing the arms to either rest or put the dumbbells down, we keep them in this bent position. And by being in that bent position, I've, I've just basically kinked the garden hose. Right? I do not have the same blood flow through that limb because I've closed down the joint. I've impeded the blood flow, the natural blood flow through that joint. So we're creating a metabolic overload. We're creating an occlusive effect here that is going to allow you to see and feel a difference instantly. You're going to do everything in your power to want to put your arms and straighten them out and put the weights down, but you can't. You just do that for about 15 seconds, and then you crank out another 10 reps. And you do that for 15 seconds, and you crank out another 10 reps. And you do that for 15 seconds, and you do it until you literally cannot resist that burn inside your biceps. And you can do the same thing with your triceps, and you don't even need any weights at all. You, do, you apply the Cobra push-up, as I'm doing here. 
And again, what we do is we knock out the Cobra push-ups. And by the way, I'm doing these from my knees because they are that damn hard when you do them this way. You can't do them necessarily or not, not a lot of repetitions if you're doing them from your toes. If you can, you're a better man than me. And push yourself to do that if that's a possibility. But what you want to do is you crank out, again, a certain number of reps here. I have 15 as my goal. And then I stay down in that bottom position. Now, I'm not hovering here. I'm not making the triceps do any work. I'm just not allowing the elbows to straighten out. I'm not allowing those triceps to breathe. I'm letting them stay in this bent position, again, impeding natural blood flow. It's not dangerous, guys. It's venous blood flow. And what it's doing is, again, it's creating that metabolic overload. And I crank out more reps, and I keep them in that position, and I crank out more reps. So you're going to find that staying in the position Alone is probably harder than actually cranking out the reps. But at some point, you're going to have to give, but you've created a stimulus that you probably never had before and you're not used to, and that is great impetus for new growth. And then finally, we save the best for last. This is one that I actually showed you before when it relates to chest training. This is an overcoming isometric. And at first glance, you might think, geez, Jeff isn't really doing anything here. He's not moving. But that's the point of the isometric. And what you want to do is you want to set the weight stack up here as heavy as it gets so that you cannot move it. And you want to try like hell to move it as hard as you possibly can. You are pushing and pulling here, in this case, as hard as you possibly can to try to make that thing move. But if you selected the weight correctly, it's not going to go anywhere. But that doesn't mean that your muscles aren't doing a lot of work. As a matter of fact, an overcoming isometric is going to yield better gains by way of increasing your motor recruitment. You are pulling as hard as you can here and building up this contraction strength over time. And you're doing it in this very fixed range of motion. So what you want to make sure you do is you don't just do it here, but you vary the angle slightly and you do it about three or four times. So you can see progressively I'm closing down that angle. I'm going from more of an extended position to more of a mid-range to then finally more of a contracted position in the biceps. No one is easier than the other. They're all hard if you're using as much effort as you possibly can. You can also do this again with the triceps. We do it with the tricep push away. You change the angle of the joint, one from more of a flex position of the elbow to as you work your way out, a mid-range, and then again all the way out in that contracted position. But the key is the same. You're using a weight that you cannot move, but you're trying to move it as hard as possible, getting better motor recruitment, getting a better strength and contraction ultimately, and even when you go back to your concentric training, you should have that carryover so that you have more strength and then therefore a greater capacity to grow bigger and stronger. So there you have it guys, there are four ways for you to intensify your arm training that are going to allow you to start making those new gains one inch at a time and start seeing noticeable improvements. Guys, when it comes to arm training, it really is an untapped area of potential, I think. Your arms allow, they're begging you, do more. I have more capacity for you to train me. You just have to figure out the ways to do that. Here are four ways that if you haven't tried them, I want you to start trying them and incorporating them in the, thing with the things that you're doing in your arm training. In the meantime, if you're looking for a step-by-step -step plan where we lay it all out step-by-step -step and putting the science back in strength to make sure that you're getting the most out of everything you do, head to athlinex.com and get our athlinex training program. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what I can cover for you on this channel. I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys. See you soon.